Hi, my name is Mimi Enright, speaking with you today on behalf of the University of California Cooperative Extension in Sonoma County. We are here to offer some guidelines and inspiration for the zero to five foot space surrounding your home, an area called the Ember Resistant Zone. Creating defensible space around our homes is one of the most important actions that we can take in preparing for future wildfires. As we know all too well here in Sonoma County, wildfires are part of our landscape. We need to be prepared, starting with our houses and property. Each of us needs to be assessing the risk factor for our properties, especially if you live in a high fire severity zone or the wildland urban interface. Joining me is Sonoma County Supervisor James Gore to offer his perspective on why it's so important for each of us to take action. We have learned some hard lessons over the past several years including how to prepare our homes for wildfire so that we can help firefighters do their job and slow the spread of wildfire. Sonoma County is fortunate to have such an amazing landscape. But when that landscape is dotted with homes, they actually become fuel sources for an advancing wildfire. It is in our best interest to prepare our homes for fire, starting with the houses themselves. Thanks, James. The majority of structure ignitions are attributed to embers. Embers have been reported to travel over a mile from the main fire front and can cause home and building ignitions by directly igniting materials on, in, or attached to a building. The recommendation is to have an ember resistant zone, and this applies to all properties. Whether it's a mobile home park, a townhouse, a planned unit development, single family detached home, or a structure on a large ranch. This also includes areas under attached decks and stair landings, as well as the areas surrounding outbuildings. Creating an ember resistant zone is proven by scientific research and post-fire assessments to reduce the threat from wildfire caused exposures. Building on these hard learned lessons, we are able to offer increased safety and preventative measures during times of wildfire. The goal is to eliminate all combustible materials and vegetation from the area immediately adjacent to structures. This reduces the potential risk of embers igniting combustible materials and transmitting fire to your home. So let's talk about the actions you need to take in the ember resistant zone. The first step is to harden your home, followed by the second step of creating defensible space surrounding your home. The zero to five foot zone, also called zone zero, is the area within five feet of a house and any outbuildings. The state of California is developing new legislation to mandate the Ember Defense Zone. Get ahead of the curve by implementing your Zone Zero now. Creating Zone Zero is a big shift away from how we have typically designed our home landscapes. Many homes have traditionally massed woody shrubs, called foundation shrubs, against the house. Optimally, you want to remove all combustible materials from Zone Zero, such as plants, planter boxes, and combustible mulches, such as wood chips. If it's organic material, it can burn. At a minimum, these should be removed if they are under or near windows and eaves. If a shrub under a window is ignited by embers, the heat from that flame can break the window and bring the flame into your home. You should remove any wood fences or wood gates attached to your home and replace them with non-combustible materials, such as metal. You should also remove any hedges from Zone Zero. Hedges connect your Zone Zero with other zones and could transmit fire directly to your structure. Hedges are typically sheared, so they are often full of dead debris and twigs, which makes them much more flammable. If you've moved a wood pile into Zone Zero during winter, make sure you move it outside of this zone during fire season, at least 30 feet away from structures. Don't store fuel cans or propane tanks in Zone Zero. Move them to an area with dirt, gravel, or concrete away from buildings. The same goes for trash cans or storage bins. All of these items are easily ignitable and burn with great intensity. It's best to keep them far away from structures. Just because Zone Zero needs to be ember resistant, it doesn't have to be boring. There are some great design alternatives that you can consider to replace the use of combustible materials in Zone Zero. Here are some ideas from Sonoma County residents who've gotten creative in their zero to five foot zone. Zone zero is a great place for walkways or hardscaping with pavers, rock mulch, or pea gravel. It's also a great place for seating areas or other gathering areas. 
but if you have any furniture, cushions, or doormats within the zero to five foot zone, make sure to move it out of that zone on red flag warning days or if you are evacuating from a fire. If you absolutely must have plant materials in zone zero, use low growing, non-woody, herbaceous plants without surrounding combustible mulch. A well-maintained, low-water use lawn, such as native grass that is mowed to less than one inch in height, is acceptable. There are some great low-growing herbaceous ground covers, such as succulents, native fragaria, or ajuga, which would work as acceptable alternatives as well. Remember, the more vegetation you have in Zone Zero, the higher risk for ignition and flames transmitting to your home. And no wood mulch in Zone Zero. Wood mulch is highly receptive to embers and can rapidly spread fire to larger plants and to structures. If you do keep vegetation in this zone, you will have to monitor it closely for any dead foliage buildup. This zone also tends to accumulate dead leaves blown in the wind. Any dried leaves or debris should be cleaned out regularly during fire season, and this is particularly important on red flag warning days. We often see trees in Zone Zero. The biggest issue this creates is potential leaf litter on your roof and in your gutters, as well as leaf litter on the ground, all of which you will need to remove on a regular basis during fire season. It may simplify your ongoing maintenance needs if you remove limbs overhanging your roof or keep them over six feet above the roof. While we're speaking about trees, this is a good reminder to make sure all trees are limbed up six feet from the ground and regularly remove any dead or dying branches. This helps prevent fire from spreading from the ground to the tree canopy. It's a Sonoma County code requirement to remove any tree limbs within 10 feet of a stovepipe or chimney. If you've already removed larger plants from Zone Zero and replaced them with low non-woody plants, that's a step in the right direction. But it's important to realize that all plants can burn, so don't be lulled into a false sense of security. It is safer and more responsible to entirely remove plants from Zone Zero. The bottom line is that your best strategy for the zero to five foot zone is to avoid planting there and to remove all combustible materials. There are lots of ways to get creative with Zone Zero that still create beauty and help to better protect your home from the threat of embers and direct flame. We hope this video inspires you to create your Zone Zero.